Hello everyone and welcome back for another Star Trek the official Starship Collection review. I finally have in front of me issue 122, the USS Jaeger NCC 65674, as seen on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, this was one of many ships that was seen hovering and orbiting around the uh, DS9 station, mostly in the opening and closing shots or the uh, established stock shots of the uh, later seasons, especially during the Dominion War, that is uh, the late seasons five through seven. And uh, so yeah, finally have a model of this thing. And uh, there's a lot of different mixed opinions and controversies about this whole thing. Uh, but uh, we'll get right onto that in a little bit. But as you can see, there's a model and a magazine. So I'm gonna put the model aside for a minute and we can dive right into the magazine. All right, and here we are. The magazine, uh, 122, as I said earlier, USS Jaeger. It is considered a uh, light cruiser, I suppose, uh, launched in the 2370s. It is 402.11 meters long, and apparently this thing can go as fast as warp 9.55. And there's a neat image of the ship on the cover and just looking at it you can tell it's basically a uh, <laughs> a child of the intrepid class and the Maquis Raider so let's look at this all right so the magazine is the same format as all the others as usual table of contents and more spec specification information as I said earlier it's considered a light cruiser in the 2370s 402.11 meters long. A crew of 204 can go as fast as warp 9.5 and has phaser emitters and photon torpedoes. Turn the page and you have yet another uh, image of the ship there, this time from the underside. And you can really see the Maquis Raider right there, the entirety of the ship. Uh, with the Intrepid class uh, saucer section. Uh, also with Intrepid class warp nacelles there. And uh, some text on the right hand side there about the ship. And of course, one of the many times it was seen on Deep Space Nine, pretty much doing exactly that, just kind of hovering. Uh, you don't really get to see it up close or anything like that. And more on that. Your more text about it in the history. And the uh, centerfold page showing you where the various components are located, etc., as well as some uh, trivia, etc., on the right hand and left hand sides. And finally, here's a section on the building of the Jaeger. Um, this is actually an interesting read. Um, as I said earlier, this model is basically a, uh, a hybrid of the Maquis Raider and the Intrepid class, or in this case, the USS Voyager parts. And they basically just took uh, Voyager model kits, commercially available model kits that were in store at the time, and uh, combined them with uh, pieces of the Maquis Raider. And uh, now we have this. And here's a section on Hans Beimler and his contribution and work on DS9 and many of the episodes he worked on. And I guess it's what I consider to be magazine filler and more on that. Various scenes and whatnot. And more on that. And finally, the on-screen appearance page. Uh, the first time you actually see it in orbit or hovering uh, is actually in the first episode, well not the first episode, but the, actually the first episode that it appeared in would be Dr. Bashir, I presume. Uh, you just kind of see it hovering as usual. And uh, it was seen once again and in, in the cards. And of course, throughout season six and seven, uh, you see the ship uh, just kind of in the background you never really get a big look at it. You never even get to see it up close or even really in action per se. 
you just kind of see it small and there in the background just doing its thing and um, ultimately the the shot became like a stock shot and it was reused several times uh, throughout season seven and coming up next we have the uh, Romulan science vessel so that is gonna be cool too so I look forward to sharing that with you and rounding up the magazine we have a wonderful cool view of the ship there in the back the magazine and that completes the magazine there so now let me get this aside and dive right into the magazine all right and there she is the USS Jaeger itself finally got it and uh, looks pretty cool in the box and uh, so let me get this bad boy out and see what goodness lies inside What do I think? Well, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's actually a little bit smaller than I expected. Uh, not that that's a bad thing, I suppose. Um, the original Monkey Raider was kind of huge that we got in the collection a couple of years back, two or three years back. And um, that has been kind of reduced, I guess, and I guess in terms of it bidding on this model. And uh, of course you have the Intrepid class, uh, saucer section and a little bit of the spine there. And uh, you can see the registration, USS Jaeger NCC 65674, uh, which is kind of cool. You also have the registration right there. And uh, it's, an, it's a really an odd looking ship. As many people, as many of my friends and colleagues have pointed out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I honestly don't know what else to really say about it. It's, it's just a, it's a strange design. Um, but I guess they just needed to put throw some ships, ships in the background. And, uh, and so this is the route that they chose to take. Um, the most of the time throughout the series that you actually saw it is basically just like this. Uh, you never saw the other side. You never saw it really much like this or like that. You mostly just kind of saw it like that, just kind of just hovering in the background doing that. And I think occasionally there was one scene where it was docked at the station and you kind of got a view of it this way. But other than that, that's it. Uh, but as far as the model is concerned, it's nice. You got your Intrepid class warp nacelles. It's got some nice coloring on it. It's got their registry there. And I like how we finally see the return of the clear plastic for the warp nacelles. And uh, on the back of the uh, Maquis Raider parts of the ship, uh, that's painted in, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, you can clearly see that there's somebody painted it in. Uh, got your registry there. It's repeated there on the top and also on the other side. And uh, it's not on the bottom, but the paneling and the detail is really, really nice. Nice coloring, nice contrast there. Got your little blue there. And apparently the Jaeger has an Arrowwing shuttle as well, just like the Intrepid class. And uh, you know, the model itself here is pretty cool, but the design of the thing is just so odd. I mean, I don't know where the deflector dish is. I guess you can say it would be up here, but that on the Intrepid class would be the sensor array. So I don't know where that would be. Um, it's a cool model, but the design is just really weird. Um, like I said before, it's one of many kit bash ships seen on Star Trek, uh, but it's one of like maybe several, maybe five at least uh, or more that were seen on Deep Space Nine during the Dominion War because Starfleet apparently was running out of ships because they were losing them left and right uh, to the Jem'Hadar in various battles and whatnot. So they had to kind of come up with something and I guess they just started throwing things together. Uh, and this is one of the results that you see uh, on the show. 
and uh, I, I guess I'm glad to finally have it as a model. Um, was it one of the kit bashes that I was really, really looking forward to? To be honest with you, no. But now that I have it, I like it, and I'm glad that I have it. Um, like I said, this is now, what, second or third kit bash from DS9 that we have? Uh, that includes the Centaur. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, besides this, um, hmm, I think that's actually it as far as Dominion War uh, kit bashes. If I'm missing anything, please feel free to let me know in the comment section. Um, but it's a cool model. Uh, the paint job on this saucer section reminds me very much of the Johnny Lightning USS Voyager model, or just slightly bigger. Uh, my model in particular has no dents or dings or damage or anything like that, so that's always a good thing. Uh, the paint looks nice. The Intrepid saucer section is mostly metal, and the Maquis portion of the ship is all plastic, as well as the warp nacelles. Also, and I want to point out, you got your Starfleet stripe and pendant there, which is always nice to see. Overall, it's a fantastic uh, model. Uh, I don't really have any particular problems with it. Um, if you're a fan of Federation ships and, of course, Deep Space Nine, definitely uh, go out and get your hands on this thing. But as I said, it's just such an odd design. Um, the first time I really noticed this model is actually uh, in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine technical manual. It's in one of the pages in the back uh, where it lists all the various ship classes and shows you you know, some different spec information on the ships that were involved in the war. So that was my first exposure to the ship, uh, and of course on the show itself. Um, but I would highly recommend anybody picking it up. Um, if you're not really into any of these obscure, weird looking ships, then you can avoid it. Um, but I think it makes a nice addition to the collection, especially to the Federation fleet, and especially to the uh, Dominion War fleet in particular. Um, clearly the collection is starting to run out of Starfleet ships, um, but um, it's cool. And uh, yeah, like I said, I highly recommend you picking it up. And uh, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to drop me a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it. And if, as always, please hit subscribe and uh, I'll be very grateful. So yeah, that is the Jaeger. And uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, live long and prosper.